just as I was about to announce why we were late, the power company took the power again. So I had to rush down to go turn on the genset so the show can go on. The show must go on and the show would go on. So <laughs> thank you very much. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time of day it is, wherever you find yourself on the continent, this once again is IOT Tuesday and I'm yours truly, Samuel Atrani. For the next couple of minutes, probably up to an hour if time permits, I will be taking you through connecting the RGB um, LCD display as part of preparation for our home environment monitoring uh, system that we decided to build beginning of the series this year. So when we come back, I will be talking to you about what we've done so far and what we're doing today. Stay put. Awesome, we are back. Thanks for joining again. Awesome, 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 awesome. So, uh, as always, uh, I start with a few, you know, kudos, announcements, bits and pieces of things here and there, and then we get into the meat of things. So, today, uh, what am I talking about in terms of kudos? So, um, kudos to all the guys who made it to the IoT, kind of like boot camp in Abuja and Lagos. Uh, great stuff. I saw the pictures. I saw what you guys did. Uh, hope to see you soon sometime in either Abuja or Lagos. That out of the way. Well, it's a couple of days to the Global Power Platform Bootcamp. Globally, worldwide, but hosted locally by uh, local communities. Well, if you happen to be in Accra, it's being hosted by the Accra Power Platform User Group at NIIT, Ring Road Central. So make it with us on the 15th of February, 2020 from 9 to 5. It's handsome, packed, lots of use cases, uh, hackathons, building stuff. Just make sure you bring your laptop and bring your ID. You're going to have lots and lots of fun. Well, with that out of the way, let's get right into it. So, a recap of what we're do we've been doing. Beginning of this year, I stated that it's going to be project-based. I put out a couple of uh, projects we could build, and you guys unanimously decided that we should build a home environment monitoring system. Over the past couple episodes, we've been connecting individually the various components, especially sensors, that we will use for our um, home monitoring system. So, if I take you back to the bench, uh, you would notice that we have a setup going on here. Um, this is what we worked on uh, last week, last episode. We connected the dust sensor, uh, which is running right now. I'll take you to the screen to show you the values coming out. Um, if you can see the top here, we have the, the MQ2 sensor for, uh, I think, LPG gas and some other uh, gases. We connected that in, I think, the first episode. We've connected the temperature and humidity sensors. We've connected the buzzer to make a noise or to sound when any of these things are flat. Uh, last episode, we connected the dust sensor. Well, today, in today's episode, we want to connect this particular display. It is the Groove LCD RGB backlight or backlight um, display. This is what we want to connect today uh, in today's episode. Yep, so we'll be taking a look at this, how to connect it. And let me take you quickly uh, to my screens. As you can see right now, what's happening is that this is the code we wrote last week. And it's just spelling out... Um, information about the concentration of the you know particles or dust is spilling out the pulse occupancy is spilling out the ratio um, this is using the serial monitor so which means that if we were to be checking this from time to time we will be looking at the serial monitor that's why in today's episode we want to see how to connect the display so that we can display these values on this particular display here instead of using the serial monitor so that's what we are going to do today as always, if you have any questions, you can always uh, send it to me either via Twitter, via Facebook, via uh, LinkedIn, any of my social handles. And also, if you're wondering, okay, Samuel, where can I get some of these things? Relax. I keep mentioning the Geek Store is coming pretty soon. You'll be able to order all your sensors or your or your microcontroller kit, everything on the Geek Store. So stay put and just keep uh, keep posted. So, 
how do we do this? As usual, if you've been following us, uh, we've been I've been taking you through the base process. So some people ask me, well, why don't you just do it and come and show how you did it? And I'm like, no, that is not my approach in solving or doing these things. What I, I usually like to do is walk you through the processes that sometimes I go through, or most times I go through. It's just to let you know that it's a gradual process. You can do it. It's nothing, it's not rocket science. It's just something you can do, you know, in your own time at your own pace. And all, also, all my videos are available on demand on all my all my channels. So Facebook, YouTube, uh, Periscope, Twitter, um, Twitch, Mixer. It's there. So you can go back, watch an episode, and hey, just follow along. All right? Cool. So let's get into this. Let's get into this. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, so you might, you might, <laughs> you might realize that from time to time I might be typing and looking a little away from the screen, uh, which is just because I'm at the same time trying to respond to you know messages coming from all the streams. So, so that, you know, you don't, uh, how do you call it? You don't miss, I don't miss anyone's questions. So, uh, sorry about that. If you feel, if it looks like, if it feels like I'm looking away, that's the reason why, uh, I'm doing that. Okay. Let's put this out there. Awesome. So as you guys know, we, s we always start by just like the process, just like the process we've been going through, we start by looking at, you know, the data sheet or looking at CStudio site to look for any libraries or stuff they have for it. We look at the sample code and then we'll put it into our application and figure out how to, you know, wire things up. So let's go, let's jump straight into it and do the same thing. So this is the, if you look at this, this is the groove, LCD, RGB, back light and this is v4 this is version 4 right uh, yeah let's just let's just search this out and this should take us to sit studio and I think it's 16 by 2 yeah 16 is 16 the segment is 16 by 2 let me just get rid of this thing on top of it we don't need this so we can we can look for that Let's look, 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 look for that. Let's see. Okay. So this is version one. Let's see other versions. Uh, this is version two. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's actually search this from, from the site. So we can we can get because sometimes it's modifications to the you know to the libraries so this is version 2 let's see if we can find let's do this and do v4 this is 4.0 so let's see if we can find anything for 4.0 Okay, yep, yep, yep. So there you go. So there is the the optimized PCB layout. Oh, so it's technically just an, an optimization of the PCB layout. So that's fine. Uh, what's, let's see. So version 4. So pretty much this applies to it. Compatible with Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Big Bone, VR, Linkit. Yep, yep, yep. Actually compatible with just Arduino and Raspberry Pi. Caution indicator by the module yeah so this is supported beside few use cases and the cool thing with this is because it's rgb it allow us to change the color if we want to so the the reason or idea why i picked this is just that um in in cases where let's say we have a value that goes above the normal we could change the rgb so visually you could see that probably red means it's danger and then you need to um how do you call it you need to pay attention to something so that's why i i picked this so Let's see. So again, we're going to need our shield. We have our shield. We're going to need our, our Arduino and then the groove kit. All right. So we need to put it in the I squared C port. So 
let's go to our bench and this is where the magic is going to happen so let me connect this yeah so sda i SEL, yep i squared c make sure um let me show you this that i'm connecting this properly so we connect this here and if you look on our shield we have yeah we have a lot of i squared c so yep let's put it right here on our i squared c Okay, so uh, let's see. Let me just push these things here. So we have this connected on our I squared C. It is up. Just that we haven't done anything to it yet. So let's keep it right here. Uh, yeah. So at least you can see that. I think I should. Since we've not, we're not going to connect these things, we've connected this already. Let me move them here. We still have two more to connect. I can push it here. I want to align it in such a way that if we start putting stuff on, uh, no, let's do it this way. So I I don't have this crossing. Yeah, awesome. So, yep, we can do it this way. Cool. So that so that has been um, set up. Let's come back to our screen right here. Let's go back to our screen. Thank you, Samed. Thank you all for following. Thank you all for sharing. Amazing stuff. Okay, so once it's done, we connect it to our PC with a cable. And as you can see, this is the connection. So now we need to download the library. All right, we need to download the library. And we're going to do something here. So let's just go here, open the library in a new tab. Um, and then I I believe we put it into our IoT folder libraries the group LCD we save it and we need to install that and then we can run you know just run a few of them so if we open our Arduino IDE uh, it's gonna go away. if you remember we go to tools right uh, we go to where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Yep, we go to tools and we go to where is some? Um, yeah, manage libraries and that opens up. Let's check if we have that here. I mean, it's just I believe I LCD, I believe I installed it. LCD mini LCD, yeah. So take a look at this. So Groove, now th that's another way to, to also do the installation. Uh, we've been seeing how to download the library and, you know, uh, like install it directly. But here you could also go to a library manager, type it in there, and then install. So this is the same thing, Groove LCD RGB backlight. You can install this and get access to that. Uh, we've been using include library. So this is how we've been, we've been, we've been doing it. We go to sketch include library and then add a zip and then we go you know kind of like um uh, how do you call it uh, pick it from where we we, we we saved it the difference is that if you do the install library that goes off onto the internet to pull libraries all right so if you're in an area where you don't have internet connectivity you can have someone you know download these libraries onto a pen drive or something and send to you and then you can use that's why we've been using this um, approach so let's do that we already have that so let's go to our libraries and then this is our group we open this so what this does is that it actually installs the library and then adds examples okay so now that that is installed and enabled I can go to file examples and then I can go all the way can see that there is the there you go groove RGB backlight and then I can probably just say mm, Let's just do display. Okay, this opens opens it for me. Uh, this is just copyright stuff. You need to keep there because someone took the time to write this library. You need to appreciate that and give credit where it's re where it's due. So we're defining uh, RGB LCD. It's an LCD. There's a library for an LCD, as you can see from here. That is how we are able to define a type of LCD. In the setup, we set it up to begin 16:2 because it's a 16 by 2. LCD we are setting that up 
and then we're just testing by printing hello world just to make sure that it's running and then we're going to wait every kind of like 500 you know like every 500 milliseconds and then we display turn off display turn on display now so the display the no display and display turns the display back on and on but then the information you write you use you know the print lcd dot print to write that information onto it so this is quite very simple let's verify this code uh looks cool as you can see from yeah let's allow this i have this antivirus that keeps prompting me if there's changes to my system and I, I i go over this all the time i mentioned that anytime you connect um, a, any microcontroller arduino device to your board you need to make sure that you're checking the port and you're making sure that it's also running the correct board in our case we we check that already so if you want to learn how to do that go check the previous videos and you learn how to it's quite very simple so just setting things up a bit here and whilst that is happening let's check out what people are saying let's see let's see let's see okay uh add trust yep so let me let me show you the full screen so you can see what's going on it's just my antivirus you know trying to be overprotective of stuff that's happening on my you know on my machine that's all so yeah just playing it safe so that's that's just what's happening so if you see me clicking and you're not seeing anything that's just the reason why uh that is happening yep trust this and this should successfully load this should 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 load and we're gonna we're gonna once we we test this out what we're going to do is that we're going to go back to our previous file uh, at sketch and then copy bits and pieces of these on this and then include in that particular project so we can now see the values being you know um, written on on the on the LCD all right so yeah compiling sketch our sketch is being compiled so just giving it a bit um, okay awesome 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 so don't forget if you have any questions keep them coming um, let me know if you have any questions and I will try to answer them Okay, let's see. Well, this is taking too much of time than I expected. So let's see what happens if I just go ahead and try to upload it. What happens? Stage 29, compiling sketch. Hmm, okay. How about this looks fine. It's just compiling. Okay, you know what? I'm going to close this and go back to file um, example RGB and then just display. And this is opening another one. Good thing I've not saved that yet. So um, I can. Okay, so let's just to walk up, walk you through again. Just make sure you go to tools. All right and then your port oh so i see that two ports 10 so that's probably why it's confusing my system okay so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and unplug it all right because it looks confused i'm going to unplug it and actually i'm going to close the whole of um, my arduino ide and then um plug it plug the arduino back and then open my Arduino ID again. And trust the application. 
And once that's happening, let's let's do this. So let me go make sure that I have the right port. So again, I'm just going to go to device um, device manager. Yeah, let's go to device manager and let's go here. I am trying to get. I just want to be sure that let's go to COM port. So the Arduino is on COM port 10. Good. So I know that if I if it comes up if it comes back up. Okay, so this is not what we're looking for. So we need to make sure. So if you look down here, let me go to the full screen for you. If you look down here, it should tell you that it's connected to Arduino. So bottom right, it tells you Arduino Uno COM port 10. But to ensure that that's happening, you can just click on Tools, select the port, and then you can select. So now, what's actually... Well, that's strange. Okay. Oh, Compo 10 is happening. The board is on Arduino Uno as we have it. So that's fine. Awesome. Okay, cool. So now let's go back and go to file and examples and the LGB LCD. Let's do a display. This opens this up. Let's ensure that everything is up. Arduino Uno. And then let's try to compile this. And this should this should be faster. Because now it knows the board and everything is initially. I think it was just messing up, so just waiting for that to happen. Where is my face? Okay, awesome. That's that's done. So I'm just going to go ahead and then display. Sorry, upload the 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 sketch. And awesome. Now let me take you to the bench so you see what's happening. So I don't know if you can if you can see this. Um, it's it's blinking. I don't know if you can see that. Hold on. Let let me. Uh, so it it's it's blinking. It's 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 working now, but it's it's quite faint. Let me hold on. Let's do this. Let me put the display up here. So that's that's like very faint. Okay, so let's do this. Let me go back here. Let's try to fix. Let's look at this. Um, Okay, let's do this. Let's just go back and pick another example from the. So let's do. Let's just do a hello world. Okay. Uh, so let's go through. Let's go through the hello world code. It's the same thing here. We are including the wire uh, library, the RG RGB LCD library. We're declaring it as an RGB LCD, and the colors are for red, green, and blue. We've defined it, and then we've set the red to two five five. Uh, so the setup always setting it by setting the RGB to the color. So as you can see here, it means that when we run this, the display is going to be red. So this is how you set the display up. And then we're just printing hello world and waiting for about, you know, a second or so. And then we set the Kesa to the very big. Now, look at this as um, a 16 by 2 graph. All right. So at position 0, just like uh, X and Y, 0, 1 at that particular point, what do you want to put there? And then it starts to print the number of seconds since reset. So let's, I'm just going to set, check this out. Uh, and then we're going to deploy it. Okay. Okay. And then I can upload it. And then let's go back to the bench and check this out. So, as you can see, it's it's changed to red. And I think now 
you can see the it's it's so faint. Hmm. Hold on, hold on. Let's see. I hope I'm not broken this. Let me let me turn it in such a way that um let's see. Let me turn this here. Let me bring it right here. So you you can see that there is there is something on it. It just hasn't focused properly, so it's hard to let's see. No, let's do it this way so you can see the color properly. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. Let's go back to the code here. All right, I am I'm going to change. Uh, mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's do blue, so 255, five, and then change this here to zero. Uh, yeah, so I need to save this as usual. So let's let's go to our IOT sketches, and this one is LCD, right? So yeah, let me create a folder called LCD. And then we'll put our LCD code here. Save. All right. So now what I have done is I have changed the color from red to blue. So when I run this, the the screen should change to blue. All right. So I'm going to upload this. And if all goes well, that should change to blue. And any moment from now, boop. There you go. So it looks like now you should see, you know, you can see how we we can trigger the colors, you know, with this. All right. So we've seen red. Uh, we saw the, you know, the white. Uh, let me let me change it to green now. So let me so so is this a matter of changing this to green? So two five five. So for those of you that do not really understand how these things work. Uh, most of uh, how do you call it display colors are a, a constitute of red green and blue uh, between the values of 0 to 255 where 0 is nothing and uh, 255 is like all to the end of it so think about if you're mixing colors so if you mix depending on the ranges for these three colors you can get a particular color we're going to do something where we'll go look for a color RGB combination and then we'll use that and you can see how that translates onto the LCD. So you can get creative with any how you want to. So let's try the green first. So I'm going to publish this again. And once that is done, we can flip back. Let's go back to and then look at that. So that changes um, to green. All right. Uh, it's the it's the text that I am worried about. Hold on. Uh, let's say. Uh, okay. Okay. So let's do this. So th just to just to illustrate what I've been talking about, let's go here and do RGB colors and mind you please um, because of screen screen color differences what what we see here might be a bit different from what's rendered on on the screen all right so just that's just um, something to to take note of so let's do this so just go to RGB colors let's open stuff up and we're just going to pick any color so let's see let's see something that is interesting so no i think there is a uh, adobe color i mean why not yep why not use adobe color they are noted for good colors and graphic stuff so or kodak or something like that yep okay so let's take a look at let's see this color uh, so let's say somewhere in the ranges of uh, this actually are like uh, you know com complementary colors and all that so for those who want to do color this is more like it okay so let's see let's not let's not be fancy just picking something okay so if we go to the RGB mode here right let's go down now as you can see what do we have 
so let's see here cmyk rgb so where is that so it's saying what 50 so let's say we want this this particular color this one so it's saying that we need to use 199 of red um, 235 of green and then 19 of blue so let's go back into our, our code right here yep and let me just do this so it's what let's do 199235 so 199 235 and then 19 all right so save this Let's upload the sketch and check that out. It it's not it it looks a bit because of the lights. It looks a bit um, not visible, but let me put it here to see if I can get this. Yeah, but ideally that has changed. All right, um, that has changed the color of of it. Let's roll it back to I think um, blue. Let's do green. Green was uh, was better for us. All right. So yeah, let's change it to let's save this and let me redeploy that. Okay. Okay. So if you go back here, that so this is as you can see. So that's how we change the color. Now let's go back and check out what other options they have for us here. So we'll go back to the examples. We'll go back to the LCD. Uh, we've seen, you know, we've seen the, let's see, which one should we play with? Let's see them. Let's try the serial display. So this is going to open a new for us. And as always, setting the the okay is okay. So I think with this one, what's happening is that um, with this particular sketch, anytime you enter something from a serial monitor, they'll try to display that on the screen. So as you can see, included the screen, they are setting the serial monitor's baud rate, and here they are checking if there's anything in a serial monitor. Uh, clear the screen, and then display that write that message onto the screen so let's go ahead and let's deploy this okay so if I take you back and then now I need to first of all I need to open the serial monitor and let's go ahead and type Let's do this. Hello world. No, let's do hello IoT. That is more cool. And then I do a send. So now that. Yep, and it's right there. Okay, so uh, right now my my concern is it's a bit faint, and I want to believe it has something to do with power. Hold on, just a sec. Let's see. Let me check what ratings the um, the shield is on and to, let me take out um, let me take out the the let's see something so you might be wondering why I am doing this because um, it's just okay it's is this okay to me that Let's go back to the fact the the specs for the spec sheet for our our sensor. Now, sometimes if you're using a voltage that is less than prescribed, you might get some of these behaviors. So let's look at this. Uh, let's be very careful. Okay, so look at this right here. The input volt is five, so it's expecting that you power this thing with a five volt, right? Anything below 5 volts, we'll be expecting it's, it's going to be giving us some of these 
you know crazy flickering that we can't see properly now another thing I want to be sure because we have this is because we have the the dust sensor also on it I want to be sure that the voltages are compatible before I update it uh, so these are the tricks that um, uh, you need to be mindful of else we might have to use a breadboard and get a separate power 3 volt to the dust sensor and then 5 volts to the um, the, the LCD and that that would mean we are not using the shield so let's go and look for let me open this again let me open another tab and let's go check out the dust let's do the dust sensor and groove groove sensors uh, barometric to do, 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 humidity dust sensor yeah I just want us to to check the voltage exactly this is the one we're using let's look at the specification VCC so between 4 and 5.7 so mm, so that's fine we're safe we can we can shift this to 5 volts and we are fine so let's let me show you how to do this so first of all, I'm going to take out the power. Oh, sorry about that. Let me bring this a bit here. Uh, let's do this. Yeah. So I'm going to take out the power. And then if you look here. Oh, that's strange. It's actually running on 5 volts. So if you look closely on, on the base shield, there is a 3 volt here and a 5 volt here. All right. So... Um, it w I think it was already on 5 volts. Okay, let me push this here. Let's reset it. Let's connect it and see. Okay, and then let me go. And let me say hello, IOT. So that is sent. Let's see. Let's check this out. Okay. Well, let me see this for a minute. Awesome. So let's open back our. Let's close this for the meantime. Yeah, and then let's say hello send yep okay let me change so i'm going to change this back to a three a three volt let's see uh there you go and then let me reset this quickly so three volt now let's go back and run this okay let me deploy this again okay we're good and then let's open a serial monitor and then let's do a hello right and yeah so I'm guessing I'll have to change this because as you can see it's still very it's very faint it's it's really 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 faint it's it I even myself I can barely see this so hold on let's see hopefully we are not doing anything crazy here all right let's go back and change the colors so let's go back here i just i just want to be sure that we are not missing anything examples and then let's do the set color here and um no let's let's just do the very simple displays that we're doing 
and I would yeah hello world let's go for that and change uh, color to blue save this uh, okay yeah we need to save this so oh, let's just let's just deploy it and ensure that we can see this change from what we're seeing now to boop, yep to blue okay so we've seen how to easily connect the RGB LCD screen uh, for some reason I don't know why my my text is still misbehaving but I'm going to troubleshoot that now in replacement of that since we're having issues with that I want us to try to connect this as well since we're talking displays today let's try connecting this two and see how that works another thing I'll probably try is let's see what if I change the I square C and then restart I mean that's just this is just my my debugging and troubleshooting mind telling me okay let's try something else oh no okay no this will not work let's change this okay let's try let's run this again yep um, still the same nothing changed okay let's go ahead and connect let's connect the 40 gate uh, display so again as usual let's go to our seat studio and look for so this is groove uh, let's see we have displays groove for to get display oh sorry I wasn't sharing that so yep so this is a our, our, our for to get display yeah version one here you go the same thing we're seeing here so in replacement of this I'm going to take out this one <coughs> let's take a look at the voltage so um, 35 volts that's fine so it should work perfectly uh, supported Arduino Raspberry Pi we're good to go uh, yep and this is actually plugged on D2 so let's go to our bench and connect this to D2 right here uh, yeah as you can see connected to D2 and then I'm gonna connect this So this is connected to D2 and <coughs> I'm going to keep it right here so it's visible in line and let's go down so we need to download the library and then install it so again let's open this in the new tab we go through the same process all right so I save the, li the, the library here and as always we go back to our sketch include library and then add zip library and then we'll select we'll go look for our libraries and this time for the get display open this goes ahead to install the library and some sample um, sessions for us so now I can go to file example go down here you can see uh, for the get display and then we'll just say um, display number very basic all right so as you can see quite simple we set the clock uh, we've set yeah so this is just setting it up because um, ideally if you're doing this you go through some hoops but thanks to see studio they made this quite easy for us so this is the number we want to display and then we set that up we initialize it set the brightness you know and all that and when the numbers doesn't fit what do we do we truncate it and then so because it's just four to get display we're doing a few uh, adjustment here so the number you're trying to display is more then they're going to tr truncate it and display a setting number now they're using a display number function all right from the library we just added all right so let's just as always run this hopefully there we go now let's see um, hold on 
Oh, okay. I need to take I need to take this off for now. Let's do this. Switch it back to five. Put this back here. Yeah, D two is fine. Okay. All right. Let's compile this again. Awesome. And then let's try to load this. And let me be sure we selected the correct pin. So clock six, one, two, six, pin delay. Okay. Load. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. Okay, yeah. That that seems right. So why are we not having uh, okay, hold on guys. It looks like there is something going on with my board. Let me connect this. And so I'm just I'm just troubleshooting. So there seems to be something going on with the board. I hope I didn't fry it. With all this up and down and static. Okay, let's see this. bring this back okay connected all right and then let me connect back to the PC and we are back at 5 volts so we should be okay Okay, I'm going to run this for the last time. I know we have time, but I need to make this to work. Install. Oh, looks like my ID broke down. Um. Okay, well, no worries. Well, so, unfortunately, uh, it looks like my 4 digit sensor, uh, the, sorry, display is not working, but I'm going to dig through my pile of gadgets and sensors. I think I have another one coming up. So, I will connect that and I'll write that up and I'll share it in an article on my blog post. Well, that's all time is going to permit us for today. You've seen how I connected the RGB LCD display. So if you grab your hands on one, download the library, connect it, and put the, and just put the message in there. And try all the examples, and then we can add it to our display. Now, next um, on the next episode, we're going to connect this, which we want to repurpose for um, kind of like a leak detector or like a water detector. So we're going to connect this, and then potentially we connect the RGB next week. So after that then we know that we've connected all the sensors and we'll be ready to put all of them together in our home automation uh, sorry on our home environment monitoring system so that's all time is going to permit us until i come your way again next week don't forget this weekend 15th february 2020 nit global power platform bootcamp don't miss it if you have any questions just let me know and then i will answer that until then Enjoy the rest of your day.